The following program is powered by Ride the Wave Media. You are now listening to The Restored Wife. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to The Restored Wife podcast. I'm so excited because today I have my very good friend, Alyssa Lujan, with me. She is also a trained expert in the six intimacy skills, and we are going to pick her brain about her experience because I love hearing about other people's journeys to finding the skills, implementing the skills, and what kind of happened along the way. So Alyssa, welcome to the podcast. Thanks, Brenda. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Who Who's Alyssa? Oh, gosh. Dang, I haven't answered that question in a long time. I don't know. I'm just, um, yeah, I don't know why that's so hard for me to answer. I think because I used to define myself by what education I received or how many kids I had or where I've lived. And so I don't know. I I think since being introduced to the skills and through all the personal development that I've had over the years, I'm learning to define myself as just me. I love personal development and growth. I love binge watching a good Netflix show and even a bad Netflix show every now and then. I feel like once a quarter, I'll stay up until one, just binge watching something. And then I'm like, oh, that was that filled that need. And I'm, I can let it go for a few months. Um, I love being outdoors. I love the, I love any sort of adventure and sometimes personal development for me is that kind of adventure, but I also love a good, a good hike or something fun to do physically as well. Sure. Oh, I love that. So adventuring, you have that common with Steph because she loves, she talked a lot about adventuring and I love the once a quarter Netflix binge (laughs) and like you get it out of your system. So now I'm curious, like what are, like, do you have a favorite show? What have you listened to recently or watched recently that you liked? And what have you Um, you even said, even a bad show? (laughs) So I'd love to know what bad shows are you watching? Yeah. Currently I'm watching Sweet Magnolias. It's like... I don't know. It's one of those shows where you can relate to the characters, but it, if you take a step back and think about everything that happens, you're like, whoa, that's a lot of drama. Like there, mm-hmm. there's no way all of that's going to happen in that short amount of time to all right. these people in this one spot. The acting is not, I mean, it's fine. <laughs> they get the job done. It's cute. Yeah. I like the clothes. I like some of the dialogue. I love watching people how they face challenge. And I like how people, I like watching people resolve conflict and some of the things that they say. So I guess that's what draws me to that, to that show. But probably my favorite is not on Netflix. It's Ted Lasso. I think it's, if you know it, then you know why it's a favorite. And yeah, if you don't, then I don't know if you love soccer and good witty humor, (laughs) it's for you. And you don't mind the bomb then it's for you. (laughs) Quite a bit of language in that show, but I just love how it explores the human experience so well within the context of like this funny light show for the most part. It does get a little heavier in some parts, but they never keep it heavy. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. I would love to hear about how you found the intimacy skills by Laura Doyle and what were your initial thoughts? Okay. So when I found the skills, I wasn't looking for anything actually. And I think I was in a season of where I pushed personal development to the side because I had so much of it. I feel it comes and goes in ways where you're like ready to grow. And then you're like, I just need to check out and just be entertained for once. But I was actually taking, okay, so maybe I didn't cut out personal development all the way because I was taking an emotional resilience class at church and I met a woman. And she kept talking about this program that she was in, and I didn't think anything of it until at the end, it was a 10-week class, and at the end of it, my husband was getting ready to come home from being gone for a year, from being deployed for a year. Okay. And so we had just finished up that class. She knew he was coming home, and she checked in with me one night, and she said, how's it going? And I just texted her back, oh my gosh, it's nothing what I thought it would be. And I said that because that day or the day before I found out that my marriage was in this crisis that I wasn't anticipating. My husband came home and shared his thoughts and feelings about us. And he was ready to head out the door. He had one foot out the door. And so 
Yeah, it was devastating. It was truly heartbreaking. And we had been through that before. So it's maybe that was a pattern for us. But Mm -hmm. at the same time, I thought that we had grown from that and we were ready to start fresh and start anew. At least I was excited for it. So she called me right away, talked to me for two hours about the skills. I think she told me about each of the six and all of the tools in between. And I don't know, I was on the phone with her for what felt like two minutes, but in reality, it was like two hours. That's just how that conversation went. And my immediate thought was, why should I be the one to try? Like I have done all the trying all these 14, 13, 14 years of marriage, why do I need to be the one to try again? And, and my other thought was just that I've tried everything already, Mm -hmm. but my friend was the way she explained everything was so convincing and she had a ton of empathy and compassion for me and my situation. She shared with respect for me personally. And, and at the end of it, I knew that I at least had to give it a try. It's like I was kicking myself. I'm like, what? I always do this. I always give it a try. I always want to do more. Yeah. But for whatever reason, I felt really drawn to what she was telling me and it all resonated with me. And actually, a lot of it had aligned with a lot of the development that I had done to that point. Okay. Yeah. That sounds like she was very convincing and very excited about it herself. Yeah, that's true. She was in Laura's group coaching program at the time. I think she had just finished three months with her. Oh, wow. And so not only did she see a difference in her life, but she got to witness differences in all the changes with the women that she encountered in that group coaching program. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So super inspiring. She was inspired. She's sharing this inspiration with you. And I hear the resistance and like, I've done it all. And I can just, yeah, I I can just feel myself being there and like you're done, but there's just like this little, I don't know, a little glimmer, a little something, little voice. It's saying just this one, just try this thing or just this one more thing. Yeah. And I'm like, gosh, dang it. (laughs) Cause I know I'll do it. Yeah. Cause yeah, it sounds like you're already so committed to that self-development. And so were you like, were you wanting to save your marriage at that point or were you just whatever? I, that's a good question too. I think with the help of my friend, I wanted to save my mm-hmm. marriage. She spoke so much faith into our relationship and just mm. poured that into that conversation that it gave me enough hope to try. Even if it didn't work, I at least had enough hope to try. Yeah. Cool. So we heard your initial thoughts Were there some things that just sounded right from the beginning and what were they like, what really stood out to you about what she shared with you or even maybe like, where did you go from there after talking to her too? Oh yeah. Okay. The first thing that I did when we got off the phone was she said, right when we get off this phone, I I just, I don't know. There was just something about her where I was like, okay, whatever you tell me to do, I'm going to do it. So she said, right after Uh this, right after you get off the phone, I want you to grab a pen and paper and write down as many things as you can think of um, as reasons that you're grateful for your husband. And so that's what I did. And I, she said, try to do at least 25, but if you can do more than that, then do it. And so that's what I did. I had this journal at the time that I probably didn't even use and I pulled it out and I wrote down as many things as I could. One was Mm -hmm. like, he smells good. Like (laughs) he uses good body wash. Like at that point where you're so hurt and heartbroken, it's, oh, what do I have to be grateful for? He's trying to leave me with these five kids. And I was just, I just spent the whole year alone. And then he comes back and he tells me like, I could have done so much in that year. I could have started fresh and moved on or I don't know, figured some things out. I was already by myself. So yeah. Anyway. Yeah, it turned that resentment and just started to soften my heart, just the act of diving into that gratitude. And I think we all know the power of gratitude. Sometimes it takes a little extra motivation to to do it. Yeah. And it sounds like you had that extra motivation from your friend and what she shared, (laughs) because I'm just imagining going from like your husband saying, I want to move on. I want to change things. I'm not sure about our relationship. And then 
writing a gratitude list for him just sounds yeah. like a huge stretch. Great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Again, he should be writing. If he wrote a gratitude list for me, then maybe he would be willing to try for our marriage. But but at the end of the day, this journey is all about ourselves. And yeah. I can attribute that. I can honestly say that during the difficult season that followed, I went to bed many times with a heart full of love and gratitude for what I had. And I just felt like my life was so full. And you wouldn't think that with being in the middle of a marriage crisis, but it really softened my heart. And I can attribute having that peace and love and comfort and joy to that daily practice of gratitude and just focusing on what was going right. Because there were so many things that were going right. And if I didn't have that habit in place, I would have missed them. Mm, yeah. Wow. That sounds like really powerful. And so how were you feeling like the first time you wrote this list? How did you feel afterwards? Oh, I don't even remember. <laughs> I'll say this. I know how I didn't feel. And okay. because what I didn't say when I could have in included this in my introduction, because I often share this story about my past and I have a history of rage and not being able to not having the tools to process anger and not having the tools to resolve conflict. Like when we were first married, I would scream, I would fall on the bathroom floor, like uncontrollably. I would throw things. I would storm out of the house without telling him where I was going. Just mm -hmm. this, it's, it was just really ugly for so many years. And I went to therapy and received some tools, but some of that temper never goes away. It's a constant, I got to keep myself in check. And, and so even with all the progress that I've made over the years, if I hadn't have had these skills and someone to take me through the skill, walk me through it, because she checked in with me constantly, this friend who introduced me to the skills. Mm -hmm. If I didn't have that, you're, you asked, how did I feel after? I can tell you I wasn't throwing things. <laughs> and I, I should have been actually with what was going on. I was finally justified in being that crazy woman. And I wasn't. Yeah. And I wow. wasn't screaming and I wasn't yelling and I didn't feel devastated. I felt heartbroken. And yeah, there were moments of de devastation, but overall I didn't feel defeated. And yeah, it kept me afloat for sure. I think you asked about resentment. There were times where I would write out the gratitudes and genuinely feel grateful. And I feel like that was the norm. There were definitely times where I did feel like, why isn't he doing this for me? Why am I the one still? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So where did you go from there? So you started this practice of gratitude mm -hmm. and just really focusing on what was going right and your yeah. friends checking in with you. What happened next? Even though that was the first thing I did after the call, I would say the biggest thing that I did was to take charge of my self-care. And okay. that's the part that I loved and I could do without resentment because, yeah, I'm going to try again. I deserve this. <laughs> and yeah, Winston, thankfully, he was really humble about it. And he was like, yeah, whatever time you need, I understand. So I was huge in my favor. But just diving into three things at least a day, like Laura says, that fill you up. My friend said she used the term perpetual self-care. That really resonated with me, too. Mm-hmm. And I would say that's how I could dive into genuine gratitude was just because I was so filled up. I was finally taking care of myself for the first time. We mm. hear about gratitude, not gratitude. We hear that word self-care a lot. And I feel like no one actually shows us what that means exactly. And I think it gets yeah. mistaken for either constantly putting your feelings and needs first it is that in a sense, but if you hear how Laura describes it, it's it, she describes it in a much more tangible way that mm -hmm. actually does fill you up and does light up your world. And it's not this, oh, I need to do this for myself. I need to. It's just, oh, I love this. I love life. Oh my gosh, I'm happy. I mm -hmm. love that I can take good care of myself. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I love even for me, like I I even had like yesterday I was doing self-care and I had my three things and I was conscious of it. I, I make a conscious effort now to do those. 
And I think I was getting a little bit into the, I don't know if it's like a checklist, but this isn't lighting me up per se. Mm. Like I, I think I overdid it on one of my things until it, it lost its efficacy. And so, yeah, that's just such a good reminder to me that it's about loving life, doing things that are like, I am so glad to be alive. And this, this life is amazing irregardless of what is happening around me. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Okay. So you dove into self-care. You're doing your gratitudes. Mm -hmm. Did you get Laura's book? Oh, yeah. So that was another thing where I told you, whatever this lady says, I'm going to do it. So yeah, when we got off the call to dive into gratitude and she said, download her book from the library. You can get it on the library app for free, easy peasy. Just download it and start listening to it. Yeah. And at that point, I still had that little grudge for trying yet again. So I decided to do something fun with it. And I said, you know what? If I finish this book in the next seven days, I'm going to get myself a dress. There, there's one I had been eyeing online. And so I was like, uh-huh. I'm just going to do it. I'm going to buy it. And that's my reward for finishing listening to this book. And one of my self-care items was running at the time. Like I loved, we lived close to this man-made lake in town that went, it had a bike path and a running path. And it went like right by the downtown area where we lived and there were bridges crossing the lake. So anyway, I loved running around that. And I would just put on, put in my AirPods or headphones and play her book. And, and just listen to it till I finished it. Okay. <laughs> I got the dress. I still have that dress. It's one of my favorite ones. <laughs> oh, yay. <laughs> I love that. I yeah. need a reward if I'm going to do this. I yeah. love that. You took, you just took charge of that and you knew you were doing a work that it was, it was hard to, to switch over into that. I'm going to try with this new thing, or I'm going to try this one more thing and just really taking care of yourself during that process. I, I really love that. Yeah. Laura uses that phrase. You deserve a medal. Like I hear her use that a lot. Ah, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and it's so wonderful to receive that. Acknowledge- yeah, I do deserve a medal. Like this is hard, like to keep hoping for something where you're grasping at evidence that it's really going to amount to something positive. And so it was much more rewarding to be able to give myself a medal and to have that acknowledgement come from within and be like, yeah, 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 I do deserve this. Yeah, I am. I am doing a good, hard thing. Yeah. I love that. A good, hard thing. Because there's like stuff we can do that's hard. That's, I don't know. It doesn't lead us where, yeah, it's just too costly. Yes. So what were you noticing? Were you noticing differences in your relationship with your husband? Oh my gosh. So we went from constantly, like before he was deployed, it felt like any con- connecting or any connecting conversation or any conversation at all was about whether or not we should be together. It was just like, either we weren't talking about it at all, or, or I don't know, or we were, and it was about whether or not we should be together. It was never anything mm-hmm. positive. And that usually led to some sort of contention. And so that was the biggest change I saw right away. There was zero contention in our home, which was incredible. If you think about the situation, like even if our marriage was in a good place, my husband coming home from a year long deployment, us having five kids, like that's stressful to make that adjustment and that transition. And yeah, we were able to do it without contention. Things were really smooth. There was more peace and harmony in our home. I remember laughing, feeling, oh my gosh, I forgot. I forgot how to laugh. Like, I forgot what that's laughing inside my home. I was always so serious about everything all the time and thinking about the next thing that needed to get done or accomplished. And all of a sudden I was lighthearted and the same way that I was when I would go out with my girlfriends. Like, you're having fun. There's no worries, no expectations, no demands. You're just able to relax. I finally felt like that at home, which was night and day difference from what it was before. Yeah. Cause that's like where you are. I'm guessing most of the time is in your yes. home. Yes. 
Yeah. So that's like a huge difference and a huge shift. And yeah, that's a huge transition too, to go from a deployment. You get so used to running the show yourself and knowing how you like things. And then the husband comes home and it's, it could totally just throw you for a loop, but it sounds like it didn't this time. Oh my gosh. No, it didn't. It was so Hmm. easy. Like it was, yeah, things were so much easier and I didn't know it could be like that. I I don't know. My parents fought all the time growing up. Like I knew what a, a real marriage looked like. Yeah. <laughs> My husband's expectations that we would never fight. Whatever. What is that? But turns out it's you can create that. You can have that. Everyone deserves that. Yeah. So your husband came from an, from the idea that like fighting at home isn't necessary or it doesn't have to be a part of family life. Was that like a conflict you guys had? No. Like fight <laughs> part of marriage. It's just what we do. I think he knew. I think he wasn't so naive that he felt like we would never fight. But I think and he was right that it was unhealthy for it to get to the level that it did between us. And that he was right in that sense. It was. We did have a very unhealthy relationship in the beginning. Yeah. But on my end, I felt like he was being overdramatic. His expectations were too high. And like, of yeah, course there's a conflict. This is marriage. This is two people coming together. But right. Yeah. yeah. But I'm glad he had that hope. That of what marriage could look like. And I, I feel like it was a seed that was planted that helped what we have now come to fruition. Wow. So what's the, what are things like now? So you've had big transitions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What are things like at your house? Are they the same? Have they changed? Do you still use these skills? Oh, these skills. So it's been a journey. I'm not going to get into it. But I thought I was going to like listen to Laura's podcast too. So I knew the pattern. You dive deep into the skills. You're in it for two weeks. And then he comes home with a new wedding ring. (laughs) I don't know if you listen to her podcast, but that's how I had it in my head. Yeah. And I was an A plus student. So I was like, oh, yeah, he's going to he's going to do a do over proposal in like months. It didn't happen that quickly. And it took some time. And there's more I could say about that. But I'll say it for a later day. I'll just say that right now our marriage is. Oh my gosh, he's apologizing for ways that he showed up in the past. And all doing the all during these last three years. I've been using the skills for yeah, a little over three years now. And I have felt like I've been so accountable. But if only he were that accountable for mistake. So anyway, he's showing up accountable for his, the part that he played in the past. I never thought I would see it. All his years going to therapy, he never wanted to do therapy. Mm -hmm. together. He just knew that I was the problem. I knew I was the problem, but that's something that he's brought up. Would you go to therapy with me? Let's work this out. And which now that I'm introduced to Laura, I'm like, (laughs) (laughs) no, I'm not going to, I'm not going to go through that headache. There's a, there's an easier way, but, but just the fact that he wants to, it shows that he wants to do this together. And we're talking about our future together. We're parenting our children. Our children are teenagers now. Not all of them. We have teenagers now. And you have teenagers. How tricky that can be sometimes, knowing when to let go and when to set boundaries and draw the line. And and we're able to do that. Even though, even if we don't agree eye to eye on the details, we're able to communicate that respectfully to each other. And we can sit down with our kids, even if we disagree with something, even if we're just agreeing with each other, we still Mm -hmm. come forward as a united front and our kids know that we have each other's back. I didn't know that, that we'd ever, ever have that. And my husband's home full time and he had been working, like I mentioned the deployment, but even after he came back, it seemed like he was always working in another state or away from home, but he found a job close by and he started expressing that actually happened after he started expressing his desire to be at home more. Like he wanted mm-hmm. to be around the kids more. And again, that was something that I thought in the past was like, don't you want to at least be home for our kids? Mm-hmm. Anyway, that's something that I had to let go of that, let him do his thing, but he came to it on his own. He wanted to be at home with the kids more. He's wanting me to work less so that I'm home more so we can have more family time together. He's eating our family and family prayers and scripture study that wasn't there before he's making a, a more concerted effort to 
be on time for church. I don't know. I'm listing all these things and they seem so little, but it's those little things that you're like, oh, if only. And yeah, um, it's incredible what happens when you let go of all those little things. You allow someone to just be themselves. You start loving them for who they are. And then I don't know, those little things you forgot about, they end up coming back and the good ones, desires. The one thing my friend said when she was introducing me to the skills, and this was probably the hook, was she said, Alyssa, it's the most Christ-like way to love. And in all my years of therapy, I realized I can only control myself. I can only control how I show up. And that's what I began to take pride in was how I showed up. And unfortunately, it wasn't always pretty because of my issue with rage and and my emotional struggles. But having the skills and Laura just really dumbing it down and making it so simple helped me to show up with a Christ-like love. Like, this is the woman I always wanted to be in my marriage. This is how I, this is the wife I wanted to be to my husband. This is how I wanted to feel towards him, towards our kids, towards being at home. And, and so it's so empowering to have those tools to feel like, oh, maybe I can love like Jesus. And when you do familiarize yourself with these skills, you're like, oh, that's how he did it. That's how he showed up. That's how he set boundaries. And that's how he accepted people. And that's how he helped people rise to be the better versions of themselves. And it's, yeah. What more could you want? One more. Could, mm. could you want? Yeah, so beautiful, Alyssa, and so powerful and just inspiring. Like, I hear you saying those little things. Like, you're like, oh, they just sound like little things that I'm like, man, those little things are what adds up, or those are the little things that were in that weren't happening for me in my relationship that were like, hey, he's just not the right guy. He doesn't know how to do these things that that I came into this relationship expecting and thinking this is how it's going to be. This is how we're going to do it. I just was confident that it was going to go that way. And then when it doesn't, I just, for me, it just, they would just pile on top of each other or, and it could be the littlest thing that would just be like, this is such a drag sometimes. Yeah. And I just love how you're saying that these little things that were used to be like little thorns in the side are now happening at your home. And yeah, I love it. And it sounds practicing the skills and your efforts, your commitment to your faith as well. Just it brought all those things into your life that seemed to be missing before. Yeah. Yeah. And really those little things just become icing on the cake because you dive Mm -hmm. into these skills and you become so happy and you're like, well, life could be this good. And you don't really need those little things anymore. And then they show up and you're like, ooh. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yes, I love that. Like it's like a fun surprise now. And because you've already let go. You've already let go of it. Love that. So you've shared a lot about what has been rewarding about practicing the skills. Is there anything else that you've noticed? Yeah. In addition to just feeling you have the tools to be happy and to have your marriage be, I don't know. I guess one thing that I didn't mention was even when we do have conflict, because that's inevitable, that that is marriage is having that conflict, but it doesn't have that negative connotation to me anymore because that's, that's where we grow. And I know exactly how I know, know the tools that I need to use and the path to get there. And when we argue, it doesn't have to be for weeks at a time, for months at a time. It could just be that day and then respect is restored, intimacy is restored. And and I guess that has built the other thought that came into mind. And that is just having that confidence in myself, confidence as a woman, because I feel empowered and I feel like my marriage can be as good as I want it to be. And I have the tools for that. And, and I didn't realize how much that had affected me as a woman in the past. Feeling like I would feel confident, but I, and people would tell me that, oh, you seem so confident and sure of yourself, but you're like, if you only saw what was happening on the inside, it's just a front. But, but actually being able to agree with that now, I do love who I am. I am confident in who I am. And I love myself as a woman, as a mother, as a wife, as just me, as Alyssa. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. I love that. And I love you too. And I just think you're so like, you just have this amazing calm, like calm, but powerful presence. Mm. And yeah, it's just, I just love knowing you. Thank you so much for sharing all that you shared today and just really sharing your heart and opening up with us here. I'm sure, like you mentioned, there are challenges in relationships that come up. So what what do you do now when do you have those moments where it's you don't know where to turn or yeah i'm just curious what you do what else you do with the conflict that comes up now yeah i still do all the things that i used to pray read scriptures talk to a friend but now i think it's much easier for me to let go of the shoulds like i should be angry about this or in this situation i'm supposed to like I'm supposed to hold a grudge or, or I should be so offended or I should be so determined to put my foot down. Like I've let go of all that heaviness and give myself permission to grieve, to rest, to have fun. Like I remember feeling it's okay for me to be happy. I know what's going on around me, but I can still love life and be happy. And I feel mm-hmm. like we don't give ourselves that sometimes. You're, oh, you're in this situation. You shouldn't be that happy. Like you should. So anyway, I think that's the biggest thing is I allow myself to to feel however I want to feel. And and then probably self-care too. like, all right, what do I need? How am I feeling right now? What do I need in this moment? And then I usually reach out if it's something like really tricky, because we've definitely had a lot of that since me finding the skills. I'll reach out to you (laughs) or a fellow coach. (laughs) Who is so capable and yeah, I know. Yeah, we've definitely had conversations that have been real turning points for me. Like it could have uh-huh. been so bad, but being able to hear your voice on the other end of the phone and just having you stand for me and know the exact right words to say. And yeah, that's, that's priceless. That's in everything. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. I, yeah, same for me. I just, it's, it's such a blessing to have a coach on tap. <laughs> Or like those safe places that you can go and share and get it all out so that it's not like dragging you down. And and then if you want to have the tool that that could help, it's available there. And yeah, I love that. And just like your willingness to to seek out the support when you need it. And yeah, it's just so beautiful. And the permission to be yourself and to be happy. And to let go of the heaviness of I should feel a certain way given where I'm at. And to just really ask yourself, like, how do I actually feel and, and what do I want from this? I love it, Alyssa. Thank you so much for coming on, for sharing with us. What would you say to somebody who wants what you have now, where your husband's stepping up and you feel good and yeah, um, I think you know where to go? Yeah, the first thing I would say is that it's possible if my husband and I could do it with everything that we've been through and all of our challenges, like all of the messy areas of relationships, we've had challenges in them all. (laughs) And so if we can do it, it's definitely possible for you. And as far as where to start, I would just say maybe there was something about this call that resonated with you. Like maybe you got curious about the book or the podcast or a certain skill, like just start with whatever is speaking to you in this moment and don't worry about doing it perfectly but just start and it'll lead you to the next step and keep your sight set on what you want laura says the desire is the seat of feminine power so if you want something like stop denying yourself or stop feeling like it's not possible if it's there and you want it then that's for a reason Uh, oh i love that i got chills when you shared that and if somebody is resonating with something that you shared, how could they find you and re- you know, reach you? I'm a simple person and old school. So just email me, reach out to me, Lujan at gmail.com. Awesome. Thank you. Alyssa's also a coach. So yeah, she's always happy to share her wisdom and she gives just the best, simple, straightforward advice. I just love it so much. I have one final question for you before we sign off on this episode. And it is, if you were a Spice Girl, which one would you be? 
I'd be cinnamon spice for sure. Is that a spice girl? <laughs> oh, it's not. Ginger spice is a spice girl. Does ginger work? Ginger, no. No, I just think that kind of, and I'm anything from that. <laughs> okay, remind me. Remind kind of me who they are. Today. All right, we've got. Pos- Flash, right? Yeah, they're sporty. Yeah. Pop, baby, ginger, <laughs> and scary spice. Oh, dang. In some ways, I'm like, I'm none of those. And then in other ways, I'm like, actually, I can relate to them all. Yeah. Or maybe you're just your own. Like you're the, they added you on later. You're cinnamon spice. I love it. <laughs> a fit. So That's fun. It. There we go. Awesome. Thanks again, Alyssa. And we'll hopefully see you back on the podcast again real soon. Sounds good. Thanks, Brenda.